some shark species practice cannibalism in utero. According to the county administrator, Chuck Hucklebridge, the lack of effectiveness of piecemeal technocratic solutions here can only be solved with more piecemeal technocratic solutions. The sea wolf remains acutely aware of anything that might constitute food. As a result of industrial pollution and sewage wastewater, Dead Horse Lake was designated a Superfund site in 1996.
Artists spent 16 years building this sculpture out of trash pulled from the lake, only to have it thrown back in the lake by intoxicated locals. Quiet space is the ideal stage for the shark to meditate and harness her pure potentiality. Any fever has seized Port Clovis, making it dangerous for anything that swims. Scourge of the Swampland, Bayou Willie.
The appetite of this shark is nearly insatiable. Let's wrap it up, Coasties. It seems Port Clovis says shark versus dolphin, orca versus giant squid, boat versus pylon. When establishing dominance, the contest is usually a deadly one, with survival as the prize. Regular there from Mingo Joe's. People say it's a tourist trap. But it's the only plate to get a decent Cesarec that don't have me on their do not serve list. Statistically speaking, swimmers are far more likely to be killed by a rip current than a shark. Just not this one. Make no mistake, those shark hunters may occasionally drink on the job, they know actually that's pretty risky. struggle between man and nature.
wanders around Trash Island, where they enjoy a steady diet of hypodermic needles and used pregnancy tests. An insatiable fish, the bull shark is nine tenths appetite. of 73 was a magical time in Port Clovis when local favorite Trash Talk placed 20th in the Derby and the city placed first in the country for petty theft. Sharks are responsible for just 3% of hunter deaths. Drugs, alcohol, and poor firearm handling account for the rest.
lake should be embarrassing, right? But in Port Clovis, they put up a monument. You gotta be the best at something. Beach, it's foolish for humans to assume we are immune from zoological dangers. The shark should really get some water in her gills. The bull shark must return to her native ocean home. Say what you want. Them hobos, good workers. Unlike my so-called son, Kyle. That's why I pay him to stay on the lookout for that shark. Sharks have a habit of gobbling up anything that finds its way into the water. I really should get some polarized lenses. Caution to the wind, the big fish escalates its battle against Port Clovis. Port Clovis has grown bored of the hunt, leaving our shark to fight another day.
behind Australia in terms of shark attacks on boats. Handyman special overlooking breathtaking panoramic lake views. Open living with vintage appeal. Call Deborah. the shark discover the miracle of self-love.
appreciate the grant from Sunshine Solutions that made this show possible. We'd also like to remind viewers that mass cloning and gene editing for today's military is safer than ever. Because of the smaller incidence rate of boat attacks, boat owners tend to believe they have a sort of immunity from shark attacks. But they've been wrong. Dead. Never one to pass up a
A catfish is easily distinguished from other species by their smooth, scaleless bodies and signature whiskers. Shark uses lipids from high fat fare like this to help fuel her reign of terror. a home near the retired nuclear cooling towers. This is a great opportunity for the shark to test the theory that exposure to gamma rays gives you superpowers. Predatory scavenger is often quite content to dine on whatever wastes fall to the ocean floor. This grouper eats fish, octopi, and crustaceans.
Sometimes it will flee from an unarmed swimmer. Other times it will launch itself full bore at a moment. I wouldn't know him from Adam. If he kill another fisherman, that's between them and him, yeah?
The shark returns to the grotto to focus on personal transformation.